Hello Bathians, if that's the correct term. I'm Richard Lobb, the principal developer of the CodeRunner plugin for Moodle. I'm told you have some interest in this. Thanks for inviting me to talk about my baby. I'd like to begin by taking you to a demo site, CodeRunner Org NZ, which is this one here. So it shows you some pictures of CodeRunner, or a picture of CodeRunner, and a graph of the usage stats of CodeRunner. I really want to point out you won't be alone if you choose to pursue CodeRunner. It's used in over 1800 sites around the world and it's still going up. Well, I expect it to flat top fairly shortly. On the site there is a link to the CodeRunner documentation which is on GitHub. For some reason or other it's not very well indexed by Moodle, if anyone, sorry by Google. If anyone can tell me why please do so. Uh, as it stands you will have to actually browse through it the slow way and there's lots of documentation there. You probably don't need it if you're writing simple questions because there's lots of inline help in the question authoring form, but for more advanced stuff you will need to come here. There's also a couple of demo quizzes here. There's one for Python 3 and one for some C and Java questions. And in fact, coming down a bit, there's also a bit of SQL and an example of the graph UI that I will demonstrate to you later. And there is a question repositories link here, which gives you some example questions in various categories, Octave Question Repository, Python Question Repository, and so on. To get access to these, you need to be a teacher, so you need to email me and I'll, I'll give you access. You have to have an account on the quiz server, uh, sorry, on, on the, the site first. The, the quality of the questions isn't all that great, but better than nothing, I reckon. So that was that site. Uh, now I want to tell you a little bit about how we use CodeRunner at the University of Canterbury. We have a special quiz server set up in our department specifically for courses that wish to use CodeRunner questions. It's used in our Stage 1 courses, that's those three, and in various other courses. Mostly they're using Java, although many of these questions use the Graph UI that I'll demonstrate rather than actually writing code. And Singe 201 is Java, ENCE 260 is C, which I'm told are the three questions uh, languages of interest to you. So let me take you to one of our courses, the COSC 131 course, which looks like this. So COSC 131 is a brand new course this year. It's being taught to something like 1,080 students, would you believe? It simply wouldn't have been possible without CodeRunner to mount a course of this scale because we didn't want to mark by hand a code from that many students. Our learning modules in this quiz, there's something like, sorry, in this course, there's something like 11 of them, are Moodle quizzes. Each one consists of interleaved information panels, which are the ones marked I here in the navigation portion of the window, and questions, typical Moodle questions are sort of code, uh, sorry, um, multi-choice and short answer, but of course we're interleaving code runner questions in here. Let's see how that's done. So here's the info panel at the start, which is all the links to the lecture notes and videos, and then we have an info panel on iterating over lists with, again, a link to the specific video for it, and a short answer question to see if the students have actually read that. Then we have an introduction to counting loops and the range function. Again, this reinforces the contents of the videos. And at last, we have a code runner question. This one says, write a function print squares to up to some number that prints output showing the squares of all the integers from one up to that number. And there's an example here, a table of how we test it and what we expect the function to do. We assume that the students are developing with an IDE. We use Wing 101, although students can use their own if they like. And when they think they've got their code working, they paste it in here. So let me pretend to be a typical student who isn't terribly good at reading all the detailed specs. And they will have developed a piece of code which they think works, and they will have pasted it in here. So there it is. It says for i in range number, print using an f string, i times i equals i squared. And we give them two buttons. Now, pre-check isn't an out-of-the-box um, functionality here. We've written our own question types, in-house question types, which do a lot of extra stuff. You can find out more about those under advanced uh, authoring of questions. Um, for now, let me just demonstrate what it does. So when the student clicks pre-check, we run a special program called PyLint, which is a style checker. And it says they're missing a function or method doc string. Oh, yes, of course, I should have written a doc string. A doc string in Python, let me be a typical student, might look like that. 
Perhaps that's the problem solved. Let's pre-check again. Yes, they get a passed. Notice that there's no penalty to the student for doing pre-checks. There is a penalty regime on actually checking, which goes 0, 10, 20, 30, etc., up to 100. But there's no cost in pre-checking. So at this point, they think they're ready to go, so they click check. And what they get is a horrible red answer box showing that basically it didn't work too well. Didn't work for anything, in fact. They're all crossed. Now, I should mention here, I'm cheating a bit. I am a, a staff member, so I'm seeing this grayed out stuff. All the student is seeing is the first failing case. Uh, the tutors and staff members get to see all the other failing cases to help them help the student debug. So in this case, it's very obvious. And in fact, there's a show differences button. It will show them that they've got the uh, missing the, uh, got an extra s a line at the start and they're missing the last line. So let's assume the student knows how to fix that. They say, ah, yes, of course, I should have started at one. And because Python range goes up to, but not including number, I'll have to go one extra there, which is a little bit tacky. Let's try again. Looking much better. But we're now failing this case. That's because the student didn't read the spec properly, which says it should print the error message when the number is less than one. So I'm going to pause the video and fix the piece of code, like so. Uh, one of the things we're teaching here, of course, is read the specs properly if you don't want to get penalized. So at this point, the student is feeling optimistic and clicks check. And now they get this lovely green box. And this is very rewarding, actually, very motivating. Students seem to be very determined to get these pretty green pictures. And even I, I must admit it's a bit bizarre, but I get a buzz out of all the green ticks as well. So there's ticks on the right and ticks on the left. I'll just zoom out a bit. That's what the student would m normally see the, the entire answer box. So that's a typical question. Now I'm going to show you how you author such questions. So here I am in the question bank, Moodle question bank for this course, and I'm going to create a new question. As usual in Moodle, there's a list of the different types of questions you can have. And of course, we're going to choose the nice one with the pretty icon, Code Runner. I'm going to add a new Code Runner question to the question bank. And I have a choice of which type of question I wish to use. That's type within Code Runner. Now, there's a big list here because on this server we have a lot of our own in house question types. One of the key powers of Code Runner is that you can develop your own question types, which virtually all enthusiastic teachers do. And out of the box, you just have things like C function, C program. This is write a function in C. This is write a program in C. In the case of Java, you have write a class, write a method, and write a program. But in Python, we just have a standard writer piece of Python code. It can be a function, program, class, whatever. So in this case, we're going to use a generic Python 3 question type. I'm going to cut back the number of rows available to the student to answer it. I'm not going to bother with pre-check. And I'm going to, going to use the default penalty regime, which is a free submission for naught and then 10, 20, and so on. Template parameters are advanced things. We won't do those. And I'm just going to call this the square question. And it's going to have the text, write a function sqr of n that returns the square of the mistyped square of its parameter n. And I should fill out a, a sample answer to validate the question, but I don't have time for that. We're going to rush straight through to the test case. Here you put a piece of code that tests it. Maybe, for example, answer is the square of minus 5 and print answer. You can write any sort of test you like in here. And the answer I should expect to come out of that is, of course, 25. And I should have, um, I'm going to use that as an example, this is automatically displayed to the student, and I should have at least one more test, so let's run with 11, and that should print 121. And of course I should have more tests, this is a very crude example here. Let's just save that and see what happens if I now preview it. I preview that, and this is what the student sees. So you'll notice there was only one test shown, square of minus 5. If I had clicked the um, show as example or use as example, there would be two rows in this example table. In here, the student gets to enter their answer, which in this case should be as simple as def square of n return n times n. Now, this isn't pylint checked, so there's no doc string required. That actually should be just sufficient. And there we do, we get the two 
tests shown. Nice green screen, ticks. So very easy to edit simple questions in Python, Java, C, whatever. Coding questions were what Python, uh, what sorry, CodeRunner was originally developed for, of course, but it has expanded over the years to cover a number of uh, alternative domains of question. One of the slightly surprising things to me was that people started using coding questions in quite different areas. Here's one from a, a networking course where the teacher is using CodeRunner effectively as a way of checking if the student knows how to use various formulae, in this case a formula for the uh, total time taken to communicate across some communication channel of a given length and a given packet length. So this is the ha student has to essentially write a piece of Python code that um, captures the mathematical equation and the appropriate one in this context. So that's a, a somewhat novel way of examining mathematics. There are also, as I have indicated, other um, user interfaces that can be used with, with the code runner question type. So let me show you a couple of examples from the data structures course, the stage one data structures COSC 122. Here's a question that asks the student to draw a tree that represents the min2 heap given by that list. There are some subtleties in here I don't want to get into. One of the things I'd like to note for you is that this is a randomized question. So if I refresh this question, redraw it with uh, different sample data, you'll see that the list changes here every time I reload it. So the answer in this case will be a tree like 32, and you have to fill out the other values below, 42, 88, and so on. I won't go through the whole process, but this is what it looks like to draw a tree, and at the end, the student can pre-check it or check it. This is clearly not the right answer, so if the student pre-checks it, which is free, they'll get told, uh, no, it failed the initial tests even, which check that the tree, I'll just en enlarge that for you, check that the tree includes all the relevant values. No, it doesn't, so it's not even getting past the starting gates. Eventually, when the student gets it right, they will click check here, and they'll be uh, graded to check if it's exactly correct. So that's one type using the graph UI. It's reasonably flexible. Um, you can whoops, you can drag stuff around, drag whole um, connected subgraphs, and so on. To show you a m much more elaborate answer, uh, example of that, here's a question from the theory co course, COSC 261, which asks for a non-deterministic uh, non finite automaton which ex accepts the shuffle of um, whatever that is. I'm not <laughs> a theoretician here. And um, the answer to that is really quite elaborate. It's that. So I'll just drag that a bit so you can see it. So that's the sort of um, much more advanced question that the student can be asked in theory courses. In fact, the, the um, interface here was initially developed specifically for drawing finite state automata, but it's been expanded to uh, handle more general questions. I use it, for example, in a c another course of mine. Let me show you. This one here, this is drawing a, a Huffman um, coding tree from a set of numbers using an algorithm that they're given in the notes. And I've shown them the Huffman uh, the forest, which is um, partway through the algorithm, and the student has to do the next two steps in it, which would consist of identifying the two smallest nodes, drawing a common node up here, 20, you have to add those two together, 25 that way, then the next two, which would be 15 and 17, connecting those two together, which add up to 32, I hope. And hopefully, if that's um, if I've got my own calculation right, it passes the pre-check and it passes the test. And there are other things you can do with CodeRunner as well. There's a, a table UI where the student gets to fill out a table and the question author then marks that using a program. And there's a very general purpose HTML UI where you can essentially write any HTML you like with uh, answer boxes, drop down menus and things and again grade that by a computer program. So I've demonstrated authoring, and I got asked uh, to tell you how hard it is to use. Well, uh, somewhere between real easy, I hope, if you're just writing simple questions, or really rather difficult if you rebuild your entire course around CodeRunner, which has, it is what we've done. But I would say it's huge fun to do this. Uh, up until this part of my life, I never thought that writing exams could be fun, but actually CodeRunner exams are quite fun to write. So I hope I've managed to interest you a little bit in CodeRunner, and if you do go ahead with it, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Bye.